Charizard. This time, it will be that Radiant Greninja accompanying all of these flex attackers. We got to feature this a little bit earlier, but we're going to see sort of how everything unfolds, and, and there is a lot to talk about when it comes to this matchup right now. Yeah, yeah, there really is. It's one of those very interesting matchups because you think, oh, is there a loss zone single prizes uh, against, or, you know, more of a single prize focus against Lost in Giratina. There's a lot of intricacies in how these two, like, uh, sort of attacking styles are play out against each other. It's a matchup we've seen many times before. Can really give it the edge to either way, depending on the, how these players play it. So uh, with these two top players piloting these, I am really, really fascinated to see how what their approach is going into this match. Yeah, there's some really interesting tech cards to talk about. One of the big ones sort of flip-flopped in my mind of what I maybe wouldn't have expected. When it comes to Manaphy, John is the only one playing Manaphy in this deck. Usually we see the Lost Zone deck's biggest weakness is something like that Moonlight Shuriken to take multiple prizes, and John has identified that. But with both players playing Radiant Greninja, it's super important to know that that card will not be available, but John not having that information potentially could very much alter how he plays this matchup compared to knowing that there's nothing that stops that powerful attack. Yeah, but although that's very interesting because John isn't playing any water energy. Oh, wow. But again, the this. second time this is what we see. Oh, Lost Zone, we just do water energy, right? Nope, not this time. Yeah, there is that uh, really cool inclusion of the Banette, something we do not see a lot. And speaking of which, Shuppet is in the prize cards as well as that Manaphy, but uh, these prizes are not looking great for Pedro. Has a Mirage Gate and that Prime Catcher at the top of the prize cards. Freya, I, I, this is a 2-2 Banette in this deck. Can you talk me through why we're running Banette through this deck? Okay, so... Um... The, the Benet EX, I'm honestly not in... I, I think I have less of like a firm grip on that. Of course, it does have that attack that uh, stops your opponent from being able to play item cards. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can uh, set it behind it in the early turns, you know, put on a little bit of you know, item locking pressure. But of course, uh, the other Benet is that one for Lost Origin, which has that ability where you can put it in the Lost Zone and get support back from your discard pile. Now, I imagine this is a twofold thing. First of all, obviously, it gets support back, which is nice, but it's two more cards in the Lost Zone to yeah. get to your 10 in the Lost Zone more easily. Yeah, great ability name. Puppet Offering, that is... Definitely got to be up there with some of the best. And speaking of the best, this is what you ask for. Stakes on the line. Everything between both of these players as we are kicking things off. Pedro, starting with that Comfe in the active spot, he does already have a Radiant Greninja. So we'll see the concealed cards be used. Two additional cards for Pedro. And this is all going to be about building up this Lost Zone count and also trying to get multiple Comfe down because of the advantage that some players have going second with the Lost Zone deck. Garatina, you can choose to Abyss Seeking, build your Lost Zone up, or we could see something like that Cramorant apply some early pressure and try and just take some prize cards before Pedro is able to respond. Yeah, this is a really great option that the Giratina variants of like Lost Zone have, of course, that Abyss Seeking attack. Very underrated at first, but in the early turns, especially when you know you don't make threats of a knockout, you can just uh, use it, you know, get an extra two in the Lost Zone, two more in a hand, you're great to sort of set yourself up. Or in this instance, yeah, like I said, can uh, attack with the Cramorant as well, get an early prize in. There's, there can be an argument to go either way, depending on sort of what the exact situation is, and I'm sure John will know exactly how to navigate that when it comes to his turn. And this is a really tough choice for Pedro now. Pedro does not know that these prize cards don't have any super important Pokemon in them, but uh, this is a, a choice that you really can't lost zone the heavy ball without this information. No, and exactly. That Raikou would have been a great card to have with the four seal stone. Sure, it can be a liability, but we are just going to see the heavy ball get played. Uh, we'll take a look at the prize cards, and uh, Pedro's going to sort of just get the unfortunate news like, yep. yeah, if I had just lost zone that, I could have had a really strong turn too, where I can maybe grab any card I want out of my deck, and now that four seal stone in hand going to have yeah. any real value. Yeah, it's similar to the situation we saw with Ryan earlier on, where you only play the one V Pokemon, so you only have one target to put this Forest Seal Stone onto. So if you give that up, you're essentially giving up that option for the Star Alchemy for the rest of the game. So yeah, a bit of an unfortunate uh, situation there, but like you said, Pedro just couldn't take that risk knowing that uh, he hadn't had a chance to look for his deck yet. Pedro being a smart player, just making sure he takes note of all these prize cards, understands what's not there. I'm sure his plan will probably adjust a little bit now that that Prime Catcher is noted to be in the prize cards. It is a, a spec. We talk about it a lot in decks like Qian Pao and Charizard and a lot of these different decks, Iron Crowns even, but it is very, very strong. Potentially one of the best contenders in this Lost Zone deck. Yeah, it really, really is. Now, for the rest of Pedro's turn, it looks like there isn't too much to be doing here. Yeah, there's just going to be a pass after that, but two in the Lost Zone and, you know, plus some draw and conceal cards. Not too bad a start. Let's see what John can do to match it. There is a Chorus of the Experiment to start things off. That's exactly what you want to do with this Lost Zone deck. Play Chorus. Start to build up your Lost Zone, and more importantly, get some more pieces into this hand. There's already some things like Jet Energy, so we'll see what these five cards warrant. And these are actually some solid cards. The Buddy Ooh. Poffin, that can uh, immediately get some of these Comfe into play. Could even uh, grab some more pieces down the line. We do know that Manaphy is prized, so we'll have to keep that in the back of our mind throughout this game. John does not know that yet, and it's going to be 
It looks like debating even getting rid of a Mirage Gate. It's a pretty powerful card in a lot of matchups, but because uh, there's nothing, not something like the Water Energies to power up Radiant Greninja, I think John is maybe okay here getting rid of one. Yeah, there are a few, um, like I mentioned at the start of the game, there are a few different ways you can approach this matchup. What some people like to do against the you know, Lost Zone Toolbox, specifically, if you're playing Giratina, is essentially you take a Giratina focus and you just you shred to you know, KO a lot of the smaller prizes and force them to, you know, miss KOs, and then you evolve into the Giratina v just to heal out of the way of her being able to be finished off. But given that Pedro's playing a more aggressive you know, version of Lost Zone Toolbox, you have some two prize attackers going on. I don't think that strategy is going to work as well. So I think John's going to maybe want to go a little bit more aggressive and just start to try and take prizes as soon as, soon as possible. Well, Scott, plenty of setup cards, double Nest Ball, and this Buddy Buddy Poffin. Oh. So I think the choice here for John is how do you want to set this board up? The cards off Buddy Buddy Poffin are pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure we'll see two come fake come down at the minimum. But the question here, do you get aggressive, go in with that Cramorant, start to apply some pressure? Your opponent's start was okay, but it wasn't super explosive, and there's something like uh, some uh, maybe extra pivoting cards, like that uh, rescue board, things like that. So we'll see what John decides to grab. We'll just check through yeah. the deck, and we'll note that that Manaphy is prized, and maybe thinking to himself, you know, it could be risky to put down multiple Comfey in this spot, because my opponent can not necessarily easily, but very realistically get to seven in the Lost Zone, power up a Moonlight Shirk. And of course, not only that, but it's important to note, there are only two cards in the Lost Zone currently. So if you were to bench these two come phase, you don't even know if there's like the switching means in hand to make sure that you can do, do two more flower selectings and then also bring the Cramorant up. So there's still like a little bit more to go in terms of getting there with the Cramorant. And yeah, maybe bearing that in mind as well as what you just said, maybe it is safe to just go for an Abyss Seeking here, just build up the Lost Zone a bit more and just uh, take it from there. Plenty of paths with this Garatina deck. It's why some find this to be really tricky. And yes, respecting that, that Manaphy is prized. is only going to put one Comfe mm. into play. And John's strategy, it looks like, has completely changed just because that one card is unavailable at the time. Yeah, it's, uh, and, uh, but, but that's what you have to be careful of, right? Yeah, so you have this, you know, protection tool against uh, a double snipe on the bench, but if it's not available to you, you've got to recognize, look, I don't, this is very early in the first game. I don't know what Pedro's playing. I don't know if this option is available, but until I know that for sure, I can't risk it. So, so you know, I'm going to just play it, play it safe and uh, not leave just two easy prizes for my opponents to take. Still see the Nest Ball get played. It will find that Radiant Greninja, a great ability to have online concealed cards, Get rid of some energy cards, draw some cards. Who doesn't like that? I mean, Radiant Greninja, pretty much by far up there for one of the best cards out of this F block. It does everything, it attacks, it draws cards. And we'll see it put to great use here from John. He's been playing this card for a while, and it will just be the Psychic Energy hitting the discard pile. Two more cards for John. Do we see something like maybe another Giratina come down? It looks like there is another basic Psychic Energy, so would have had to attach that Jet Energy if there wasn't that being found. And it's one more resource John can save, and. Looks like we'll be building up to four cards in the Lost Zone to end the turn with this Abyss Seeking. Yeah. Maybe adding some more pieces like uh, the, the, you could always add some Colrus in here. Uh, there is a few Stadium cards, but a pretty easy choice to get rid of that Temple of Sinnoh. Really not here for this Lost Zone matchup. No, no, absolutely not. So yeah, very easy to get rid of any other Giratina V-Star as well. You're not going to need a lot of them in this matchup. Maybe you're one to deal with a two-price attack every now and then, but uh, definitely at this state of the game, can be feel free to Lost Zone one. So back to Pedro as he uh, responds back with a Nest Ball of his own. Plenty of different things he can go for here. Uh, maybe he can go for like you know, a knockout or maybe an early, some early damage with this Cramorant. We do know that um, Pedro does have the means in hand to get for in the Lost Zone. I believe that I did see a uh, switching card. So he can fire off two more flowers, let things in, get there that way. And yeah, maybe just wants to take, just put some early pressure on this Giratina B. This is the deck of branches, the deck of choices. Yes. So many different things you can do. And it's really why these Lost Zone decks appeal. It's not a straightforward deck like Arceus. It's not just... I'm going to power my Pokemon and attack. It really is more than that. Resource management, so much goes into how you play this deck out. We'll start with the flower selecting, and it is just going to be the switch. Put into the Lost Zone. Finally, Pedro finding that Colrus's experiment, and now really has a lot of options with what he wants to do here. We'll play that Colrus first. Look at these top five cards. Choose three to the hand. Send two to the Lost Zone, and, and that will put the count up to five cards yes. in the Lost Zone. If we see something like a Lost Vacuum that Pedro is playing, we could be getting pretty close to a position where maybe something like that Roaring Moon that was seen off of these cards can get in there and with the Stadium combination, use that attack, take out this Giratina, and from there, John really doesn't have a lot of great responses to that, I feel. I do believe as well, from what, um, if I recall seeing, there are, is both a Lost Vacuum and that Far Steel Stone in the hand, so with that plus the Vacuum, uh, Pedro is definitely there. He, he's got it. Needs to find those Mirage Gates and the energies as well, so... Those would be the final pieces that Pedro needs. 
And this is a really weird spot because, yeah, usually attacking with Cramorant is great, but it really does not have a lot of value attacking into something like this Giratina. Feed. No, no, it's, again, you can you know, soften it up and maybe finish uh, thing, something off later with something else, but in an ideal world, you don't really uh, like want to do that. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. great. And so in this instance, yeah, if you get seven Lost Zone, we know there is one Mirage Gate in hand already, but I don't know if there's a way to, as you mentioned, need to find either another Mirage Gate or an energy to kind of uh, finish things off. And I don't know if Pedro has that, so that's going to be what he wants to dig for. Yeah, just a save and a line. There is two oh, more no, there is. Oh, gate in the hand. Completely missed that. So this is gonna be the choice here for Pedro. Do you go aggressive? Get down this Roaring Moon, burn two of your Mirage Gates, but then put yourself at just 30 HP left. Or do you maybe want to use a different attacker and maybe something like that Radiant Greninja is what Pedro is potentially considering going for. It really doesn't feel great to just burn a gate to attack with the Cramorant. And with this Roaring Moon coming down, I think Pedro understands. I've got to get ahead. I've got to put, push my aggression. My opponent is clearly avoiding putting these Kumpfe into play, so their response might be a little bit weaker, as we are just going to see the Mirage Gate come down. And the question for me here, though, is are there enough Dark Energy in the deck? Yes, yes and there, there are. there are. So that is a big thing there for Pedro. Did have to discard two of his Dark Energy, and with none prized, had that information from the Heavy Ball, and these deck searches will be able to power up this Roaring Moon for a turn to Frenzied Gouging. Oh, but hold on a second. Uh, Pedro's eyeing up Water Energy here. Is, okay. he, is he maybe thinking of going for a Moonlight Shuriken? I mean, I, I like this play, too. Yeah. I don't think this play is bad. I, I, I think at the end of the day, you kind of trade two for two, but you're really burning two gates at that point to figure out what you want to put in terms of response. And it's not a bad line to just knock out this Kumfei, put some damage on this Radiant Greninja, and then later on, if it's not healed, you can do this play where you Sableye and then take two knockouts and something like that Radiant Greninja and the Kumfei later on, while also leaving this Garatina V active. I think Pedro understands what he needs to do. Maybe he wouldn't have liked to burn that second Mirage Gate, but really had no choice yeah. here. Yeah, and uh, I guess if you're going to do it this way, this... Um this makes sense for the sense, that, like you were talking about before, uh, using a uh, Radiant Roaring Moon mm -hmm. to KO Giratina and leave yourself on you know, the 4 30 HP left doesn't feel great when you know you're playing against another Lost Zone deck that can really sort of make use of the fact that you've damaged yourself a lot to take a multiple prize knockout. This way, you take a knockout on something, you soften something else up, but you also only leave a one prize on the active that doesn't damage itself, and you make your life harder for your opponent to make a comeback. So the choice here for Pedro, where does this 90 damage go? And I think he recognizes that it's going to have a lot more value on Greninja later on in the game. Pedro striking first, taking the first prize card in game one. And actions back to John, left with no Kumfe in play, just this Garatina and Greninja. It looks like lots of ways to search cards out of the deck, but as John saw earlier on, if your strategy is to avoid benching Kumfe, not use a bunch of these flower selecting abilities, it becomes a lot harder to continue to stream choruses, stream attacks over and over again. John will really have to think about how he wants to sequence this turn out, and where he wants to be maybe a couple turns ahead, it's super important to be thinking about the future always. It is. There is a Poke Gear now in uh, John's hand. They just did just draw off the concealed cards. Could use that to maybe find a Chorus's experiment, but debating whether he wants to betcha company put a Jet Energy on it maybe to do a Flower Setting. Yeah, it's, it's very tough. Uh, it's like you were talking about both of these decks almost. It's the deck of branching choices, right? What do you go for? What do you set up? Uh, in what order do you do things? It, it is so, so hard to play these decks perfectly. It's a big choice here for John. If you use this Cramoran and try and hit into something like this Radiant Greninja, Cramoran's waiting on the bench for Pedro. It has the energy to retreat, and this is where it's important to not only think about what attackers you want to use, but what resources it will take, how you respond if that Pokemon gets knocked out. And we will finally see the second Kumfe finally be benched, as well as this Nest Ball. Could grab something like that Cramoran out of the deck and yep. immediately queue to the top of the deck. So now, now you got to be thinking, okay, if uh, John is benching this Cramoran, what are you going to be doing with it? Because you can use it to attack into the, uh, the Radiant Greninja, but of course that doesn't feel great because you're going to be 20 short unless you're thinking you can set up something like later with Sableye. We do know that uh, John is playing one Sableye in his list, so once he gets a 10 to Lost Zone, that could be an option for him to you know, start sprinkling damage with Lost Mine later on. But looks like it's just going to be Jet Energy for now and uh, very easy Flash Select in there, keeping the Rock Sound, getting rid of another Comfe. Definitely doesn't want to bench another one, so that makes a lot of sense. And now he's going to fire off that Poke Gear. This is a big Poke Gear, really wants to find a supporter. And oh, the Chorus card. is the last card. <laughs> that is exactly what John was looking for. Now, with this Chorus's experiment, we'll put him up to seven cards in the Lost Zone and open up a lot of different branches. Now, this Garatina V, if it wants to, can 
Owen and maybe take a knockout with Shred onto this Radiant Greninja, which would be an excellent response for John. Yeah, that's absolutely what uh, John were, it absolutely really needed to sort of get himself back in here. Let's see what he actually sees off this chorus. And uh, oh, there's that Sable we were just talking about. And there's the Bennett as well that we talked about right at the beginning of the game. I can't imagine that's probably going to go to the loss zone given that we've not seen the Shepard go down. And yeah, indeed it does, along with the Garrison of E. And uh, Pedro having to pick up the, uh, the Bennett just to give it a read and uh, try to just remind himself of what, about what it does. Yeah, that beautiful Cosmo Holofoil play Ooh. Pokemon. I feel like when these players bring out their play card, I'm sure John has gone to a lot of events. So yes. may have pulled that out of a pack or it's nice to trade for some higher rarity cards, especially when you're playing a deck at this high of a stage, the international championships. And now it just comes down to how do we put the energies in play? But John is actually playing higher copies of Psychic Energy because there's no water energy in this list. So it's just playing actually five copies of Psychic Energy and it will just be the Mirage Gate. This Comfe already has the ability to pivot out of the active. And I think the last choice here for John is are you okay just taking a knockout with Shred? Or do you scare or maybe fear a little bit this Roaring Moon taking a knockout with Calamity Storm that you evolved to maybe give yourself a little bit of protection? Yeah, it's uh, that's the tough thing, right? You can give yourself the protection from the one-hit knockout uh, by evolving, but, I mean, Pedro could also just go for a Frenzy Gouging and make it redundant. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I mean... Pedro's playing two artists on for Stadium, mm -hmm. so it, it's not a lot, but there is, like, you know, some Stadium potential for a, a Calamity Storm there. It's, um... Very, 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 very tough, honestly. Yeah, yeah, the big issue is you damage yourself for 200 with this Roaring Moon, and now that John is up to seven cards in the loss so it means another flower selecting and Chorus will unlock Sableye. So, and I think John is making the right play here. Going to this Garatina V-Star, if Pedro wants to knock it out, will have to damage himself with this Roaring Moon, and John, in response, could take a three-prize turn with Sableye. So, yeah. really limiting Pedro's options. John responding, taking this prize card. Big question for me here with Pedro. Now Radiant Greninja is no longer an option, but oh. does have a huge flower selecting, finds that Colrus's experiment for the price of that dark energy. Pedro is more than happy to see that. Yeah, more than happy to see that. Gonna need to find a super rod though if he wants to attack this Roaring Moon. And that makes you think now, so this Roaring Moon is uh, sitting on the bench and is the main big attacking option that can take a return knockout. Maybe Pedro is now thinking, I would much rather get the KO with something else. He does play Mew EX, which would be a great option to take a response knockout. Of course, that genome hacking could copy the, the, an opponent's active attack. You just copy Lost Impact and just get rid of the Giratina Vista that way without then damaging yourself and then leaving yourself vulnerable to Sableye. So did find that super odd, but I think the big thing here is uh, there is nothing like a Mirage Gate, and I think Pedro is going to start firing off these Lost Mine attacks, and hey, that 90 damage from earlier on on that Radiant Greninja could be relevant, but Pedro is a very experienced player, and we haven't talked about this Freya, but I mean, these players have so many different Pokemon to attack with. The Chorus Experiment, they've got Cramorant, Sableye, all these things, but the big MVP when two Lost Zone decks come against each other is that Roxanne. It is that Roxanne, so way to go. You come, when all is said and done, a lot of these uh, matches can come down to play Roxanne when someone finally goes to that your free prize is taken, and can you make it stick, or can you draw yourself out of it? But with Pedro with 10 the Lost Zone, it is going to go for this play now with the Lost Mine. Going to Super Rod first, though, get back a couple of energy as well as that Radiant Greninja. Very important to keep that on board. That is one of those cards that can dig you out of getting Roxanne, so very important to get that back down if you can. And uh, with uh, the Super Rod, now all three of those going back into the deck. Now, uh, did Pedro have a Nest Ball in hand ready to get it back out again? I don't no. recall if he did, so I and guess... I, yeah, and I think this play really signals that Pedro is probably going to take two prizes this turn. He yeah. wants to put live cards into the deck. Energy is great. It can always be a pivoting card for Comfey. It could always act as a card to concealed cards later with that Radiant Greninja that was put back in. Pedro is very purposely trying to make his deck as best as possible yes. at this position. Really would be no other reason to play the Super Rod when... The only other way that John can disrupt is with this Roxanne. It, it, it's, it's double duty, right? Because, yeah, it, it's making sure that uh, you have the options to draw off of a Roxanne afterwards, but it's also playing the Super Rod while you have it. Because, of course, if you play, play the Roxanne, uh, then the Super Rod is gone from your hand, and then the opportunity to get stuff back is gone. So just want to play it while you have it. And uh, they're going to go for the Lost Mine, and now it's going to be very interesting to see where Pedro spreads this. So, yeah, it's going to KO that company, it looks like. And uh, I imagine, yeah, going to KO the Green Inch as well. Now, where does this last damage go? Probably on the Cramorant, really is not too, too relevant anywhere else. I mean, if you put the damage counter on the Cramorant, there's weird niche situations where you can lost mine, put 10 on the Cramorant, 2 on another Comfey, and then if Comfey Manaphy comes down, you could take two prizes. So yeah. we're actually just going to see it put on the Giratina V. So Interesting. Uh, maybe some line later on where you maybe can lost mine one more time and put yourself into range. And Pedro's entering the rock sand zone, but yep. just because you're in that rock sand zone doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to get disrupted, but John does have that rock sand, yep. and the question now, rock sand's great, it's a great disruption option, but 
what attack do you want to use? Because something like Cramorant here is just not going to be excellent. There is a Cramorant already on the bench waiting to respond to this Cramorant. And we see now that John has not been able to use a lot of these flower selecting abilities and will just be at nine cards in the Lost Zone. So going to have to settle for this Cramorant attack instead of maybe something like a Sableye Lost Mine in return. Yeah, I think John is at the point of the game where he realizes that he needs to just keep his Pokemon as bulky as possible. He doesn't want to be vulnerable to like, you know, more Sableye plays uh, in return from Pedro. So just going to attack with this Cramorant to get rid of Pedro Sableye, go for a Roxanne, and then try to finish this game out with these more bulky V and V star Pokemon mm -hmm. in the form of the Giratina V and V star. These will be big for John. He's really going to have to rely off of these six cards, especially without the help of any flower selecting. Do we see things like Mirage Gate, Super Odd, and speaking of which, Ooh. both of those cards found, as well as a Sableye, if that ever is to be an option. It is, as we talked about, a great response to Frenzied Gouging. So you can always take three prize cards if Frenzied Gouging comes after it. So. I think John understands how to play this matchup. I'm sure has practiced this lots and lots. This is what you've got to do. The Lost Zone deck that's just a toolbox just plays yep. more cards to do this type of back and forth Sableye get to 10 faster type of game. You've got to really play this big bulky game and just hope that you've got the pieces without your flower selectings to get yourself across the finish line. Now here's a very interesting draw from John. Forest Seal Stone. Now this is a card that we've seen come into these Giratina V-style lists. Normally you think you don't really want to play it because of course it means you're giving up that Star Requiem attack that can take a one-hit knockout on everything. But if you need to set up early on, Forest Seal Stone gives you that option. It could, uh, John, maybe could have considered committing it to one of the Giratinas on the bench and just uh, make it so that if Pedro plays a Roxanne of his own that you may draw out of it. But at the same time, John's take him on prize. And wow, an incredible three cards here for Pedro. Chorus Energy and another copy of that Goodness super rod. Me. And John is only playing this one Roxanne, so from here on out, Pedro is free to build this hand up as much as he so pleases with no disruption in response from John. That is not what you want to see when this is your out. In this instance, Roxanne was a lie, unfortunately, for John. And uh, Pedro even finds a Roxanne of his own to fire off later on. Wow, that is a phenomenal draw of the Roxanne for Pedro. He has a, a Roxanne of his own. A Mirage Gate, Mew EX, switching cards. This is sort of the downside of Colrus we don't see a lot is you can only pick three for yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, when you have five maze cards, like, well, I don't want to give any of these up. Can I just keep all of them? And unfortunately, no, you can't. Uh, I think Mirage Gate and Roxanne are two pretty given cards. Pedro's not playing any way to put back supporter cards. We see Palpads sometimes in this Lost Zone deck, so it really needs to value any extra way to play these supporters to draw cards, disrupt. And the question is, what is this last card? We're going to see the Mew EX or the Dark Energy as Switch Oof. card has already been sent to the Lost Zone. Yeah, this is a little bit oh, tricky, I guess. Wow. So I guess what Pedro's thinking here is that I don't care as much about you know, disrupting John. I am far ahead enough that I can just uh, I can just race, essentially. I yeah. can just take a knockout, take another knockout, and win the game that way. And I don't really care as much about disrupting John. I know I'm, going, I'm pretty confident I'm not going to get disrupted myself. So I'm just going to focus on this turbo strategy. Yeah, and this is very smart of Pedro to save the Mew because it means if John is able to maybe pressure this Roaring Moon, that is an, another attacker that you can easily respond to with that genome hacking. We will finally see flower selecting be used. and. Looks like Pedro's in the tank again, and <laughs> this is one of the downsides is sometimes with this deck, you get given super hard choices. You can only keep one. What does Pedro have to, to really ponder over with these two cards? Oh, he's kind of hiding from us, teasing yeah. us a little bit. We'll have to see what they are. Uh, show us the goods, Pedro. Come on. <laughs> there, we, there we go. Oh, is that? Like a, yeah, the escape. rescue board is one of them, and maybe a stadium car. Is yeah, the the rescue board Artisan. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So, and it could be the, uh, the Artisan going, going away. Is that... It's so, okay, it's so fascinating seeing the different language names, different cards. <laughs> like, uh, that's uh, Pueblo Altamia in Spanish. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, whatever you said, that's exactly, <laughs> exactly what the card name is. I'm not even going to try to recreate that. Somebody's, uh, somebody's going to clip it, and I'm never going to speak that language again. So, we'll see the rest of this turn. Yeah, that, having that rescue board is super pivotal. Allows you to just have a retreat, not just this turn, but for the turns coming up, and we're going to see another Super Odd come into play. So Pedro Ooh. doesn't have this information that John just has the one copy of Roxanne, but again, preemptively playing these Super Odds, putting cards into the deck, just in case John is able to pull another one out of his sleeve. You have to sometimes, it's... Pokemon is sometimes a matter of balancing the risky play versus the worst case scenario. It's like, how much do I prepare myself in the eventuality that I do get disrupted, but how do I do that to the extent that I don't disrupt, I don't play it so safe that I don't actually win the game? It's a very tough uh, balancing act to juggle, but these players are sort of doing it massively, and that's why they're at the top tables. And this hand is actually excellent. It is, this hand will guarantee that next turn something is going to get knocked out. There is a Roaring Moon in the hand with uh, Mirage Gate Energy and Mew. 
And we are just going to see Spit innocently. And Pedro just took a prime catcher off the prizes as well. Yeah, I mean, those three prizes were, two of them were excellent, right? You have Mirage <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and a prime catcher. So yeah. that is sort of the benefit to prizing some of these good cards is later on in the game. If you're not getting disrupted, you can find ways to pull things out. Action's back on John, though. He does have lots of cards to work with, several supporter cards. There is that Sableye potentially coming down into play. And this could be a situation where maybe John wants to leave this Cramorant active, knock out one of these Comfey, and really force Pedro to have not only a way to maybe power up Roaring Moon, but also have a response if something like the Sableye is in the active spot, Pedro still needs to gust out of there. But it's tough, right? Because uh, John still only has nine in the Lost Zone. Does he have a way to get that 10th card in the Lost Zone to Lost Mine? I think there is a Cole versus Experiment in the hand. So oh, okay, so that's fine. It. Yeah, yeah. That, so, uh, yeah, that, that's important. Needs that, needs that to fire that off, but... Uh, yeah, so that's going to, like I said, find Petra's find Augustus card, but of course we know that Petra has the Prime Catcher in hand already. <laughs> yeah, that's really going to be a tough break for John, not having any more way to disrupt the hand. You've got to kind of tell yourself, look, if my opponent has it, they have it, but I'm going to do everything in my power to sequence it as best as possible. Now the choice, do we see Colrus's experiment or something like the boss's orders? There is also the option of the Forest Seal Stone. I could grab any card out. It is sort of this tough debate you have to have with yourself of, do I really need anything? Do I want to take off, the, take away the option of just knocking out one of my opponent's Pokemon? And John doesn't really necessarily need anything right now. Is just considering maybe holding on to this and just playing the chorus to start things off. Yeah, because uh, what I was thinking is maybe John could, you know, use Forest Seal Stone and grab a Lost Vacuum, but he's not playing Lost Vacuum, so that's not an option, unfortunately, just to get that last, last card in the Lost Zone. Yeah, it looks like a nice, easy choice here. Can just get rid of this Shuppet and the Buddy Buddy Poffin. Leave himself with a few options. Speaking of options, we finally see that Iron Leaves EX. That could be a way to target down this Roaring Moon. I think this is what John may need to do if you can oh. maybe take a knockout with this Iron Leaves. What do you think about that, Freya? No, I think that sounds very, very solid. Of course, we can't forget Roaring Moon is weak to grass. So yeah, there it is. Counter Catcher as well they found. Going to be bringing up that Roaring Moon EX. And now with this Iron Leaves, going to be able to take a knockout. There is the other grass and ready to go in hand. I think John understands what he needs to do. I think Pedro now is very happy that he decided to keep that Mew EX in the hand. Um, John's going to do everything as possible. And, oh no, going to actually maybe take a knockout with the Giratina instead. And this is the advantage of playing a deck like Lost Boxes. I think John would not be going for this play if he knew that Pedro had a Mew EX in the hand. And Absolutely. I think John is going to get the bad news right now. There it is. Lost Impact taking the knockout, but Pedro has the perfect response as long as there's enough energy in the deck. And we just saw Pedro play that Super Rod. So as long as there's no weird top decks like energy cards, let's take a look and see what that was. It's, it's just a Hoopa. Yeah. And there it is, the Mew EX you see on John's face saying, really, you play that card in your deck? And the Mirage Gate to combine with the attachment from hand means that genome hacking will copy the Lost Impact. Pedro, Eugenio Torres going up 1-0 in round number seven. Phenomenal stuff from Pedro. And yeah, exactly like you said, you said uh, Ethan, it's just Mew EX, it's such one of the most versatile cards in the current format, giving you such amazing clutch draw power. And then that genome hacking, you can just you know, surprise your opponents out of nowhere. This is not a commonly card play, uh, common card played in a lot of Lost in Toolbox decks. And we, we saw the look on John's face. He was not expecting that at all. And so you know, Pedro suddenly dropping that and just taking an easy knockout. And all of a sudden now in the next game, John is thinking, I just can't leave a Giratina active like that. That is not a safe play. Yeah, I was thinking about this when I was building Lost Zone. I'm competing in a regional championship next week, so I've been doing some practice okay, as well okay. as uh, getting ready to, uh, you know, of course, commentate the match as well. And, and one of those cards I considered was Mew EX. Kind of wrote it off, but hey, Pedro's making a great argument for why this card is so strong. And I mean, despite those prize cards for Pedro, despite having a little bit of a slower start, did have to get rid of that Forest Seal Stone and in response to the Heavy Ball, it didn't really do anything. It was just the strategy of with that Radiant Greninja, applying pressure to these Pokemon and surviving the Roxanne. Really, that big Colrus draw, a huge moment there for Pedro. Yeah, and uh, we do see that like, the, the key lost by uh, taking a double knockout. Didn't end up being too relevant, the damage on the Giratina V in the end, but then the Sableye getting KO'd, and right there at the end, just dropping that Mew, and John's reaction there to the Mew, the genome hacking, is uh, able to, well, the, the first of the to get that Prime Catcher, of course, so that could have uh, could have been very important, but yeah. end up not mattering, as we just saw there, the final KO to seal things up. And it's nice to see these players are smiling, despite the level of competition, despite how much is on the line for these players, of course, both in their respective top 16, top 22 races, for uh, regardless of where they are. It's nice to see them still having a good time and playing this out. Yes. Getting into game two, uh, see what these prize cards are. It looks like John may have had a mulligan, so still shuffling up, but Pedro will lay his prize cards out. 
it's important to note those pieces because sometimes just that one card that's off the table can make or break how this game plays out. So it's so funny, you mentioned, so mentioned uh, next week you're doing a regionals. What, what regionals uh, is that, would that be again? Is it going to Orlando. Oh, fun so times. If you're in Orlando, get ready. Uh, I'm not playing around. I'm going to take down the tournament, so you guys better be prepared to, uh, to lose, for lack of better words. And Wow, double Garatina V-Star in the prize cards, a Mirage Gate for each. Does have that save line prize in for John. That rainy oh. and Greninja is a big deal. There's no heavy ball in this deck, and really, if you're not relying off of flower selectings, you've got to rely off of something like Radiant Greninja. And a great start for Pedro. Does Ooh, have to start yes. that Raikou V. How could that really affect maybe the way that John wants to play this matchup out in return? I mean, it is a very easy two prizer that, of course, you can take a knockout on at any time. But now John's also thinking, oh, hold on, maybe uh, Pedro could use that to take an early knockout on a Giratina V, so maybe I've got to be a little bit more careful about the amount of Pokemon to put on the bench, not go like the full spread, but maybe just to, you know, bench one or two, which to be fair, he didn't gain one anyway, so maybe not going to change too much of his approach, being mindful of the Radiant Greninja as well. Yeah, it's sort of like, a, oh, you're incentivizing me to not put double Comfey down? Okay, you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Since you asked so nicely, I'm not going to put two Comfey into play. I'm just going to do my strategy again. Uh, John actually opting to go second in this match, really valuing sort of what we talked about before. You can either build a Lost Zone up with Abyss Seeking, you can try and go for the Crammer and attack, and sort of after that game one, John now understands that Pedro has a lot of tools to deal with things. The Mew for the genome hacking, he's got the Roaring Moon to take big knockouts, Sableye, Cramorant. Kind of wonder if John's going to just go for that same strategy, maybe Abyss Seeking again early on, and hope to have a Roxanne be the big make or break card, or will he try to put the pedal to the metal, take a knockout on this first turn if the cards warrant it, with a Cramorant. Yeah, it, that, that is the decision, of course, it always is when you're playing these uh, Lost Zone based decks, as we even talked about in game one. But uh, in the meantime, for Pedro, going to be going to start with that Fleet Footed, of course. Uh, when it's in the active, uh, you can uh, draw a card or find, find a Course Experiment. That's a very good draw for Fleet Footed. Yeah, already has that in the hand, but more than happy to have another. Yep. More than happy to just chain these Chorus back to back. There is that switch. So with the Comfey and an energy in hand, we'll see this Lost Zone get built up to two at minimum. A little bit of an awkward choice. I think you've got to get rid of that Super Rod. It's just too valuable of a resource to get rid of Roaring Moon. We saw how valuable it was for Pedro in that game to just have attacking options so that no matter what John decided to put together, Pedro was ready to respond. Yeah, it is a bit interesting that he's agonizing this much over it, but yeah, it does go for the Super Rod. I mean, we have to remember, Pedro's playing four Super Rods, so he's not, he's, he's, uh, he's not hurting for them. No, it's still a valuable resource. You don't like to see it go away, but sometimes you gotta make decisions that are tough. That's the name of the game. And I think this is a pretty easy choice here for Pedro. If you think about it a little bit, I mean, Bundle, Iron Bundle is a great card, but in this matchup specifically, sure, again, it's another option Pedro could have to maybe pivot it up and is going to keep the Iron Bundle over Chorus. What is Pedro cooking here? I think it might just be because he has two in hand already, so he thinks, you know what, that's enough. I don't need a, a third one, so I may as well keep the Iron Bundle just in case. Well, Pedro is opening up as many doors as possible. John, we'll see what this hand has. Already a tough choice. There's Ooh. a jet energy in the hand. I think you've got to save this super rod. Yeah. It's just too valuable of a resource. But this rest of the hand is really not looking too good. Oh, just no, it's not. One way to search a Pokemon out. John does not have that news. We'll get it now off this deck search. That Radiant Greninja is prized. So we'll have to adjust to see how he wants to play this out. But oh. isn't even going to check the prizes. Just going to grab this Garatina out, put it onto the bench, and from here, just maybe going for an Abyss Seeking, and this is always scary when you're just going to use Abyss Seeking, you've got nothing else on your bench, and you know your opponent has Roaring Moon, you know your opponent has ways to deal with this Garatina V. You're just going to leave it up to how they draw, how their hand looks, and what you can find off these four cards. Now, that's something I want to draw attention to here, because it's a very important like subtlety about playing at the highest levels of competitive play. We always talk about how it's so important to make sure you check your prizes every game to make sure you know what you have access to and you don't. When you're in a situation like this, when your back is against the wall, you do not have the time to do that. It is so yeah. much more important to make sure that you actually play fast enough to finish out a game. And yeah, maybe in the, you know sometimes there might be a situation where you end up miscalculating something because of the fact that you didn't check your prizes fully. But in this instance, you just do not have the time to do it. So you have to prioritize just seeing as much of the game as possible. And John is recognizing that here. Yeah, game one was very lengthy, almost uh, 30 minutes at that. So we're down to just 18 minutes left in this round. It's looking like it will either be 2-0 here for Pedro Eugenio Torres or John Eng will try and squeak a match point out, put himself at 5-0-2. Anything can happen. It's all going to come down to how Pedro can put this together. Now, there's four cards in the Lost Zone. Haven't seen any flower selectings be used. And right away, another tough choice. Do you value Iron Hands as an attacking oh. choice, or do you want a switch card? And I think at this point, it might be time to say goodbye to Iron Hands because 
with the amount of switch cards that are available, I think triple flower selecting yeah. could allow this knockout to be achieved. Yeah, it, it is so tough because, of course, Iron Hands is great for knocking out something like Comfy, of course, with that Ampy very much. You can take an extra prize off of these uh, very low HP Pokemon. But like you said, in this instance, you need the switching cards to set up your Lost Zone, so going to prioritize that in this instance. And again, so many options for Pager because of that Iron Bundle being kept could even just bench Cramorant, bench Iron Bundle, and force Comfy into the active spot and take a prize that way. So we'll see what Pedro wants to go for. And I don't even hate that line either. Just play this nest ball. You're going to want Cramorant down anyways. And then you could use these flower selectings. If you find the stadium card, it's a lot more incentivized to just take this knockout without putting a bunch of damage counters on yourself. I think that might be what Pedro is thinking. And he is the master of just keeping all doors, all paths open. Yeah, if you can find the means to put together a Calamity Storm, that would be absolutely phenomenal. And if you can go for that, I'm sure you absolutely will. Going to put down that Cramorant as well. So it is another interesting option for him. Could you maybe use that to KO the company instead? We know that there's enough in the Lost Zone to already do that. It's, it's like exactly like you said, even. It's about keeping all those doors open. That's exactly when these Lost Zone decks are at their strongest, when they have all those options available and they know. And in the hands of a skilled enough player, you can put down the right thing at the right time. As we do see there, the Iron Bundle. Iron Bundle getting in there. He's uh, braving the storm, just posted <laughs> up, you know. I like to see the Iron Bundle. It's in here for a lot of different reasons, but this is going to be the first one and just already committing to it. So Pedro is going to just wow. save these switch cards in the hand, take the knockout on Comfey, and this is going to actually make his prize mapping a lot e easier, even just showing the Roaring Moon, putting the energy down, attaching to it, saying, look, I just have to play Mirage Gate next turn knock out whatever you put in this active spot. And you were saying earlier about how you weren't sure 100% how the uh, how the Iron Bundle will be relevant, but here it essentially acts like a prize catcher, right? Or like or like a boss's orders. Like an escape rope yeah, at yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, just uh, guaranteed bringing up uh, that one prizer in the comfy and just being able to knock out the Cramorant. So Iron Bundle really putting in a surprising amount of work. I like to see Iron Bundle get some action. He's goes to the discard pile at the end of the day, so he's saying goodbye for now. But who knows, we could be seeing uh, Iron Bundle 2, the sequel, making a return later on. Uh, the, I'm bundled to Ice Boogaloo. Does it doesn't quite have the same ring somehow. <laughs> we'll have to talk to our naming department maybe yeah, and, yeah, and get yeah. a good name to figure out what Iron Bundle is going to be for our second major motion picture. But for now, <laughs> it's going to be more compass. Just flower selecting away, building this lost zone. It's always important to keep an eye out on that number. It's five right now. Comfey can flower select and. Maybe John will play this a little bit differently. Bench some more of these Comfeys because that mana fee is not in the prize cards. So, very, very tough decision here now. It is, uh, you know, John is not working with a lot right now. We know that there's a bit of last letting uh, just fired off now. But uh, yeah, Ultra Ball versus Nest Ball. You've not got much going on on your side of the field. There is going to go for Nest Ball in the end, uh, valuing those resources in hand uh, and going to find another base. Maybe find, yeah, like a Cramorant of his own to maybe respond knockout on the other Cramorant. That is one way he could go. But it's a little bit tricky for John here. Definitely indeed. I mean, Cramorant can knock out Cramorant, but then. Pedro can bring back Cramorant and knock out Cramorant. And you see how Cramorant yeah, yes. really sometimes can define this match. And, and let alone, Pedro didn't really have the opportunity to go on these even prize cards. We haven't talked really about prize mapping, but if you can go from four to two to zero, it means that you've got less time under Roxanne and you have more ability to power up attackers. But this is really John's best play at this point. Spit innocently, yep. knock out Cramorant, a little bit of friendly fire maybe, but. Uh, listen, you got to take down whatever's in the active spot. Yeah, no time wasted there as well. So John, again, recognizing how the clock is tight, it just wants to take the, do these plays and take these knockouts as quickly as he can. Maybe take some time to think through the play, but then as soon as you do, just go for it and uh, see if you can finish out this game whilst there's still time left on the clock. Course experiment now from Pedro, as he does find a lost vacuum and a comfy to put in the lost zone. It looks like, oh, so super rods and, yeah, two super rods and an energy and going into the hand. Yeah, I think that might have been a nest ball, but regardless, still Three. great pieces oh, there. Oh, yes, for you're right. Pedro to work through, and this is what I was saying before. We could just see something like uh, the flower selected be used, or even Nest Ball to grab something like Radiant Greninja. That hasn't come down yet, and speaking of which, pretty sure we're going to see that Radiant Greninja finally come down. There it to is. Get even more cards into play with that concealed cards ability. Now, one sort of you know, power spike play that Pedro could maybe go for uh, if he can find it is to, of course, find that Prime Catcher and use that to bring up the Giratina and take a knockout on that. But, of course, if he does that, he then does leave himself vulnerable to Roxanne, and that could leave an opening for John to do a comeback. So maybe Pedro thinking here, you know what, I think I'd rather just take a one prize knockout, and then, as you mentioned earlier, Ethan, just do a two and then another two to finish the game. Yeah, John had a crazy comeback in that Masters Finals that he won. He was down pretty much the, the last, like pretty much his last leg. Played Roxanne, was able to fight his way out. So you really don't want to give John any opportunity to climb back in. On the other hand, you can knock this Garatina V out before it evolves. And that can always be enticing if you don't have to damage yourself. But still plenty of actions here for Pedro. Can use concealed cards, can flower select. There's 
bunch of switching cards and even something like Forest Seal Stone is a potential out because that Raikou V is on the bench. Yeah, but we might for the first time actually see this one-off Raikou V who used the one-off uh, Forest Seal Stone to do that Star Alchemy, which uh, in all the in both the Urine's game and uh, the game here, we've not had the chance to see that yet. I don't believe it's in hand currently, but if you can find his way into it, that would be a phenomenal resource. Does fire off the super rod? I don't know. Maybe you're thinking about not. Yes, no, maybe. Okay, is going to put all those back and. Uh, yeah. Let's just go carry on this chain of Cramorants, I guess. Yeah, I like this. Again, just you want to play around Roxanne as little as po as much as possible. So it means you take this knockout, and then because you're in a pretty solid spot in the lead, even if you were to do something like take a frenzied gouging knockout onto the Garatina V Star, you're not losing the game the next turn because you're most likely doing that at four prize cards. So from there, you can maybe respond with that final two prizes being taken from something like another Frenzied Gouging, or of course, that Mew EX we saw be that MVP yeah. at the end of the game. Yeah, and actually something else that could come into play here. So we were talking about Calamity Storm earlier. So we have here, you know, we have the Radiant Greninja, oh, sorry, wrong one there. Okay. <laughs> you draw, draw the arrow over. So Radiant Greninja is ready there to be like powered up and can maybe go for a Moonlight Shuriken. You could put, uh, you know, 90 on both the Giratina and the, then KO the Comfey, and then all of a sudden you can actually KO a Giratina V-Star with the Calamity Storm because, you know, you do that extra 90 damage to make sure that the extra HP that you get from evolving ends up being irrelevant. That is a good way to put on even more options, even more pressure. Now something like Switch Cart could slightly heal you out, so if there's a weird play where you can use Switch Cart twice and then heal this 60 damage off of this Giratina, it would take that play away. But with how well Pager has been drawing, with how his Lost Zone looks fairly healthy without any two relevant cards, I think Pedro is more than enough to use this Mirage Gate on Radiant Greninja and still have plenty left, especially since he doesn't need to invest into something like a double Mirage Gate yeah. with that Iron Hands yeah. being in the Lost Zone. Now, something else important to note, there was another Flash letting there, and uh, one of uh, Pedro's only two stadiums, that uh, one of those two Artems did hit the Lost Zone because the other choice was the Forest Seal Stone. He really didn't want to give that up, so that does mean there's only one stadium left in the deck for Pedro to do a Calamity Storm with, so maybe that option is going to be a little bit harder to pull off now. So here we go, Moonlight Shuriken. Where will Pedro decide to put this damage? Probably taking the knockout on this Comfey. I think that's pretty given. And it will oh, be the 90 on okay. the Cramorant. And I actually like this play a lot. It means that uh, even if your opponent plays Switch Cart, you can take two prizes with Lost Mine and then take knockouts on Giratina V-Star. I think I like this line, Freya. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so as well. Does, uh, the, the line of the Giratina could make sense as well, but I think uh, you think about it more, especially you know, leaving yourself that option and to not be vulnerable to a Switch Cart heal. Yeah, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. So John just playing Colrus' experiment. There's no Comfey to use flower selecting with. I mean, this hand is built up to be pretty massive. I mean, we're finally over the line here. We've got eight cards into our Lost Zone, so Mirage Gate can get us there if we want to maybe attack with Caratina V or V-Star like we did in that first game. But, I mean, you really don't want to repeat history when I mean, the way that that first game went. Yeah. I mean, you had an opening there. You did get to play the Roxanne, but from that point on, it's really hard when you're only playing that one copy. And, John had to make room for this Banette line somehow, and it seems that second Roxanne that we see in a lot of these Garatina decks was one of those cuts. And it's so hard now as well, because John needs to bench some uh, lower, lower HP things in order to set up more, but he knows now he's so vulnerable to a Sableye play, because of course that Cramorant has, now has 90 damage on it, so uh, he's looking for his options, thinking, you know, this doesn't feel good to bench, this doesn't feel good to bench, so what do you even grab off this Nest Ball? I guess it has to be a Comfey. I mean, you've got to put it down eventually. You, yeah. You're in a position where you're not going to find Colrus every single turn, and eventually uh, your opponent's going to put yourself in a spot where you're not building your Lost Zone up if you're not able to Lost Mine. And I think John understands that I've got to play Roxanne next turn. If I don't yeah. put myself in a spot where I can get to 10 cards potentially to fire back with Lost Mine, I'm going to be at a pretty terrible, not terrible spot, but it's going to be pretty uncomfortable. It's, it's not going to be good, <laughs> to, to, to say the least. So going to preemptively Mirage Gate uh, now as well, just to attach these two energies onto the Giratina V, get that loaded up just in case. But I guess, yeah, after this, it's uh, going to be, I mean, does, uh, does John have Gusting in hand? I don't really know. I don't think I see it right now. So, but like, you can't really, doing 110 to this uh, Radio Redinja doesn't feel great. Didn't show up for John last game, but is playing that Prime Catcher as the A spec of choice. I mean, that could be a good card. We do see the Iron Leaves this time in the hand, and I think these are going to be a big two cards off Flower Selecting. Yeah, so is one, there something two. like a Prime Catcher? No. Or, I mean, John isn't playing anything like, oh, he is playing a Counter Catcher, so that could have also okay. been an option. John was just unable to find that off of the Comfey. And this is just where things get tough. There's, yeah, this hand is just so tough. I don't even think there's a Giratina V-Star in this hand. Oh, I think John is, well. John is considering maybe putting another Comfey into play 
to maybe use Flower Selecting again? Is that really what we're looking at? We're going to see another Giratina V come down, an attachment, and it's just going to be a shred. Oh. And this is a huge opportunity now for Pedro if he can have that second Stadium card and a way to power up Roaring Moon to take another two prize cards, and John will be at a two prize deficit. Well, actually, doesn't Pedro have it guaranteed? Because he has the Forest Seal Stone in hand. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll need to have one of those pieces like the Mirage Gate. Yes. We do know that there's a Dark Energy and a oh, Dark Energy there it is. in the discard pile. And you know what? Sometimes you just have it like that. Sometimes <laughs> you believe in the cards. And another <laughs> Mirage Gate, too, off the top. Even has something, I believe, like the Super Rod in hand. This is going to be a great turn for Pedro. It hasn't even started yet, pretty much, but. He's, I think Pedro is Pedro is just jumping up with excitement at this point. He's like, uh, he's got it all, options. folks. He's got it all. He's got it all. I mean, you could even see a play where you don't use this Roaring Moon this turn. You just go in for Sableye, use Lost Mine, put the damage on. But then things could get a little bit risky. And, of course, that damage always staying. And because that Cramorant has 90 damage on it, even something like a Switch Cart will not put it out of range for a double knockout. It will be perfect math to knock it and the Comfey out to give Pedro those last two prize cards. Yes, absolutely. I think the only question here, though, is what are the energy cards left in deck? Oh, yeah, that's a very good question, actually. There is one lightning in hand, I noticed, but... And I think there is just one dark energy, so maybe attaching that energy early is not bad at all. No. We are actually going to see the Mew EX preemptively come down, and that is an advantage that you have when you have multiple threats in play. So there's a dark and a psychic left in deck. Oh, there, there is a psychic. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, but... Maybe Pedro thinking here, going to want to attach to play the Super Rod now. Maybe just get more energy back in the deck, or maybe, maybe get a Mirage Gate first. I mean, you can go either way. It kind of depends on what you think you're going to do next. But no, it looks like just going to go for the Mirage Gate now. And yeah, attach those last two energies in the deck. And uh, I mean, if you're doing it now, it's, you've got to imagine it's going on the Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon finally getting in there. As long as there's a Stadium. And if Pedro wants it, Pedro can have it, thanks to that Forest Seal Stone. But I think if Pedro can find the stadium card and keep the forest stone available. Pedro doesn't necessarily know that John isn't playing a card like Lost Vacuum. Lots of lists after this rotation do like to play that card. But if Pedro can hold on to that forest seal stone, it's pretty much a get out of jail free card and just will allow Pedro to potentially find that last piece to get him over the finish line. Yeah, absolutely. This is a phenomenal turn from Pedro here. He's in a very, very strong position. Going to go for a flower selecting with this company as well as I can. Oh, that's a prime catcher for good measure as well. Instant what on earth? grab. Just have that prime catcher for later. You don't even need it now. You've already no. got what you need. Uh, but you also get rid of that Buddy Puffin, which is a card that you don't want to find. And here we go. Seven cards off this Pokey Gear. Do we see something like the Coles Experiment, if there's any left? Even something like Roxanne. And yeah. it does have the Roxanne. It can't be played right now. But having it available for later, or if John is forced to maybe play Culver's again next turn, that means it pretty much just acts as a shuffle in, draw six supporter, and that's more than fine for Pedro. And the longer this game goes on, and the longer that Pedro maintains this advantage, the happier he's feeling. That that clock is ticking down currently at you know just uh, just under five minutes left on this round. So it's very, like Pedro's in a phenomenal position here, and I think he, he recognizes it, but he just wants to make sure that he capitalizes on it. There is uh, the Mew coming down as well, just to have that free pivot option and the, the extra draw off the restart. That's another great uh, sort of countermeasure option if uh, John does end up playing that Roxanne. So yeah, Pe Pedro is just closing as many avenues as possible for John to come back. And that's what you've got to do when you're a leading position. You don't want to get complacent. You want to make sure that even when you're in a strong position, you don't leave your, uh, your opponent a chance to make that comeback. It'll just be another flower selecting. And this is sort of a tough choice because from this point, Cramorant isn't necessarily the best attacker, but it's always a good attacker to have because if your opponent puts a Sableye in the active, this Cramorant in the active, you can always just take a knockout. But I think Pedro knows his way to win is a big Calamity Storm and a Lost Mine. So Cramorant will say goodbye for now. As Pedro can potentially maybe draw another card off of something like Concealed Cards, if that's still available. But we do know the Greninja is in the discard pile, so that is not available. No, no unfortunately not. There's Pedro's like looking through now and... Oh? Is that, is, that, is that a look of acknowledgement I see? <laughs> yeah, I think Pedro is maybe thinking, okay, am I going to use this Forest Seal Stone to grab the Stadium? And I yes. think that's going to be the choice for Pedro. We'll yeah. see the Forest Seal Stone Star Alchemy V Star Power, and it will be that final yeah. Stadium card acquired for Pedro to allow Calamity Storm to deal exactly enough damage to knock out Garatina V and push Pedro two prizes closer 
to securing himself a spot in day two here at yeah. EUIC. Yeah, I think in an ideal world, he would have wanted to, you know, not have to do that, but he wasn't able to find the last Artisan off of his other digs. So instead, you know what, just said the Forest Hill Stone is there for a reason. I can then use that to grab my other Artisan, and now I have the Calamity Storm KO, and this is going to put me in a phenomenal position to seal up this game by KOing this Giratina with free energy on it. So here comes Roaring Moon, finally getting in, showing its incredible strength, and can even put an energy attachment to this Mew yeah. to make sure that something like Mirage Gate plus a, you know, uh, Super Rod can get through the final, and Pedro also getting that Sableye yes. off the prize cards. That's a big time find. And John is left wondering how he can complete this game. Step one is definitely going to be something like that Roxanne to disrupt but it's still in the deck. So John, whether it's through a Pokey Gear 3.0 or something like a Flower Selecting, is gonna have to find that to really stay in this game. Yeah. And at this point, you recognize that I lose to a Sableye anyway, so but the Body Coffin, I am safe to venture here to come face because it doesn't make a difference whether I lose the game or not. I'd rather thin my deck out of as many cards as possible so I can maximize my odds of hitting this Roxanne because without this Roxanne, I am doomed regardless. Yeah, you know your opponent has some very solid cards and six cards is way too much at this stage in the game for this Lost Zone deck to be able to pivot out. And I think it's thinking about whether you play Super Rod, but I mean, you really don't want to put cards into your deck that aren't Roxanne, surely, at this point. I mean, no, I guess not, but unless maybe you're planning on uh, doing a Mirage Gate straight away, but no, yeah, just going to go for the Fast Letting uh, straight away and just get rid of that Sableye. It's for that Prime Catcher, though. you oh, got to keep your Ace yeah. spec around. It's sort of the double-edged sword of these Flower Selectings. Can't keep both, you got to keep one come down to just a final flower selecting ability to see if John can maybe pull out a miracle. He did it when he won the Portland Regional Championships. It's not the same stakes, but every match point counts as John is in the tank thinking, what can I do to get myself at least into a spot where I can put a match point onto my record with a minute left here in round seven? Yeah, so, and uh, you know, that is all that John's going to be able to play for at this point because, you know, at the end of uh, this game, we're not going to have time to have a game free here, but there's only one minute left on the clock. Unless uh, both of these players play at, you know, l literal light speed, I don't think we're going to see that. So John is basically just fighting for the tie at this point, going to do everything in his power to make sure that happens, but uh, very much of his back against the wall at this point. It looks like there is actually a Pokey Gear in the hand, so we're going to see this flower selecting. Do we see something like the Roxanne? And another tough choice, but is going to just keep that Forest Seal Stone, which will guarantee any one card out of the deck for John if he chooses to play that. And with this Poke Gear 3.0, do we see the Roxanne? It's no! Not, it's one of the last cards in the deck. There's oh no my way. Goodness. Maybe four cards or so. And you see John just being like, really, come on. I did all of this, and I can't even find the one piece I need to keep myself in this game when things are already going so poorly. Oh, unreal. So now I'm going to go for the Super Rod, I guess, just to put some energy back into the deck. You can go ahead and uh, do the Mirage Gates to get them back out again. But uh, yeah, not finding that Rock Sand. So now we're going to have to burn that Forest Seal Stone in order to get it, which kind of turns off the Star Reclaim option for later. It does indeed. John does have this double Mirage Gate, and I believe there's something like the Giratina V-Star. But I think we're probably just going to see even the Iron Leaves potentially come down. But the problem with benching Iron Leaves is that would be your fifth bench slot, meaning that Raikou could take a knockout with that Lightning Rondo. So we'll see what John does. I think you've got to just put this Garatina V-Star up and hope your opponent doesn't have the pieces because if you don't, it's just it's just going to be too rough. Yeah, so there it is for for Shield Stone, Star Alchemy going to find this Roxanne, and uh, then it's going to be Roxanne and Pray. Let's see, it, it, will it be a lie again, or will it, will, or will it be the truth? There come to Iron Leaves. Yeah, so Iron Leaves will come down, but it's a, sort of a, a, a two-way street because now you got a full bench, so even Raikou can take the knockout. Even though that lightning energy is stuck onto the Mew, it is something to always consider as Roxanne will come down. And I mean, it would, it would even be risky to attack with Giratina V there because let's not forget, two Giratina V star are in the prize cards and there was right, only one yes, in the deck. Oh, right. Yes, of course. We've said that right at the beginning. So, yeah, wow. It, it, perhaps the best of some bad options for John. He's uh, doing everything he can to secure his future, but unfortunately, it's going to be relying on Roxanne to sort of bail him out here a bit. And we did, he does redraw the Prime Catcher for the next turn, but then it's going to be that Prism Edge taking the knockout on the Roaring Moon. Does Pedro have the means to steal at this game by taking this last knockout? So with the clock winding down, I believe that we'll see confirmation on if time is called, who our turn zero is. So it looks like time was called, so hopefully we get confirmation on who is turn zero. But I think no matter whose turn it is, we're going to be seeing a winner in this match. Or rather, a winner in yes, this game. Yeah. And finds Kuris off the top. 
Unreal. Wow. So Pedro is in a great spot at this point <laughs> because he can actually play the Sasuian Heavy Ball, play this rescue board, and then use Mew's restart to get Absolutely. an additional two cards before doing anything else. Literally maybe could not have had asked for like a better draw off of this Roxanne. John is not going to be happy about that at all, but he's still laughing about it, smiling, having a good time. Recognizes that that's just somehow the way it goes. And Pedro's having a read of uh, Iron Leaves, I guess, maybe seeing if he could copy the attack to win, but no, it does only 180 damage. So uh, genome, hacking, genome hacking and uh, it's not going to be enough to take the KO. Neither is the Raikou, because of course it does have 240 HP. So Pedro will need to find some kind of Gusting card in order to seal this. Going to start off the restart. Two cards, what's he find? There's the Prime Catcher, the Counter Catcher! Oh my, well, the Counter Catcher yeah, really not doing much, no. but. That is a big find. Now, that is big, though. Uh, the Prime Catcher really isn't actually going to do a lot at this point because that Giratina V did not evolve into a Giratina V star. So, all it really might do is just provide one more form of really switching around. But, but could, you can Prime Catcher Giratina V and then take a KO with the Raikou. Well, both ways, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so you you oh, can yeah, knock yeah. out the Iron Leaves, too. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's in the same right. boat, but it oh, pretty okay. much acts I'm, as the Okay, I, I misread Iron Leaves' HP. I thought it was 240 instead of 220. I just realized that, yeah, that's a, that a 2, not a 4. The, the, the future background obscured it a little bit. Well, here we go. Five oh. cards off this Colrus's experiment. Psychic Energy and Sableye. Mirage Gate, Sableye. And there is a Mirage Gate and a Super Rod. Wait, so I think Pedro is really close. If Pedro can find a way to search out Sableye, the Super Rod can bring the Psychic Energy back, and Lost Mind can take these final prizes. However, Pedro is down a lot of ways to search out Sableye. It looks like there's only six cards left in the deck, so, so let's see if Pedro is going to sequence this out. He knows what he's doing here. What do we see? There's a Dark Energy and a Switch Cart, so we can see the Switch Cart get used. Even if you want to, you could fleet <laughs> foot it with the Raikou to yeah, draw an yeah. extra card if you really so please. Is there is there a lightning energy left in deck? There must be, right? Otherwise, uh, the you know this play wouldn't be possible. I mean, he's only oh, he's only playing two though. Actually, was there one that lost on earlier? Maybe, maybe Pedro can't attack with this Raikou. Well, we're gonna find out, Frey. It's all gonna come down to this. Another flower selecting ability. Yeah, that lightning oh, energy yes, is in the prizes. Let's see if Pedro has it though. It looks like he's playing quickly and does find that Sableye like, yes. that was in the prize cards. It was shuffled back into the deck, and the Super Rod plus the Mirage Gate will allow Sableye to use that Lost Mine attack. And with that, Pedro Eugenio Torres will advance to 6-0-1, clinching himself a spot into Day 2 at EUIC. Phenomenal play from Pedro, putting on a Lost, box, lost Zone Toolbox Masterclass. Huge congratulations on sealing a Day 2 spot, and wow, what a phenomenal match that was between two of the best in the world. You gotta feel for John there, I mean, that's kind of a tough matchup, even with some of the cards that you have in your deck, and I mean, that's sort of how things play out. I mean, both times that John played Roxanne, Pedro just had the response, he said, yeah, I have Colrus. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll fill my hand up. I'll draw what I need. Yep. I mean, that's sort of what you sign up for. Roxanne works a lot of the time, but sometimes that's the nature. We're playing a card game at the end of the day. Yeah, so yeah we are. Sometimes variance is just not in your favor. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, not. Yeah, but yeah, huge congratulations to Pedro. Congratulations to John. And we did talk about this at the beginning of the match, to be fair. John still has a, you know, a good uh, two more opportunities to make day two. Like, you're taking your loss here. It doesn't feel great, but you still have a chance to make that day two start. So in the meantime, let's take a look back at that phenomenal series. Yeah, very smart play with these Moonlight Shurikens. I think a lot of players maybe would have put damage on that Giratina V to set it up, but Pedro, really the MVP there. If that 90 damage isn't on that Cramoran, it could be a completely different game to end things out. So smart play there from Pedro. And yeah, John, even with the Mana Fee prize, it wasn't necessarily the end of the world. Didn't even put it into play the second game. It was just this lost mind to set up a double prize knockout and finding that Colrus' experiment after the Roxanne plus Cramorant allowed Pedro to get over the finish line, especially with that three card combination of Mew in play plus the Super Rod and the Mirage Gate. Yeah, and then going, going further on, uh, yeah, with the, the, the Giratina KOing the Roaring Moon, but uh, Pedro, uh, with, even with that awkward lightning energy prize, that meaning the Raikou wasn't an option there at the end, but still it was a piece it together by finding the Sableye to close things out. Just, um, but it was starting to start with uh, game two. We saw the kind of the trading of the Cramorant so early on. We see a Cramorant knockout into the Comfey, and then a Cramorant knockout back, and then another Cramorant after the Super Rod. It, it really was a battle of the Cramorants early on in game two. Absolutely, that's how it plays out, and we'll highlight that again. The 90 damage on the Cramorant, so relevant towards the end of the game. Pedro, just going on that 2-2-2 two, two, two prizes at the end, really paying off for him at this point. And that Sableye being taken off the prize cards meant that Pedro knew what his deck looked like, used all those abilities yeah. at his disposal, was able to 
find that final two prize cards and you see him <laughs> breathing a sigh of relief. You know it's uh, a lot of nerves on stage sometimes. I mean, Pedro has been on this stage multiple times. He's a regional champion. He is an international champion. But listen, no matter how good you are at Pokemon, it's still always the line. The games get harder and harder. The players get better and better. The decks become more complicated over time. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Pedro will be going to 6-0-1. John, not out of it like you mentioned. Yeah. But wow, Lost Box still performing since its release and now here in the F regulation. Yeah, even when you're one of the best in the world, even, even you will breathe a sigh of relief when you draw a terrible handle for Roxanne, but then your top deck is a chorus of experiment to get you back into the game. And uh, yeah, just uh, even even the best of us can, you know, uh, fall prey to that sometimes because we recognize that luck is part of the game. It's uh, skill is uh, just as important a part, but sometimes you just got to ride the top of your deck and hope for the best. Yeah, especially with an opponent like John. And yes. again, can't give John enough credit. John has been the top level in seniors and then when he aged up to masters and finally has that big win and sure is looking for more this year and it's not out of it by any means so wow a lot to unpack in that game i mean radiant greninja probably the mvp in, in disguise